I would like to thank uh, Governor Pritzker, not only for his strong leadership, but for making my job easier in explaining to you the task of the modeling groups. So let me tell you a little bit about modeling, but in my own language. Modeling an epidemic is rather like modeling the trajectory of a rocket when you don't know where it started from, in what direction it was pointing, and how much fuel is on board the rocket. And you can't even see the rocket. Modeling an epidemic is not rocket science. It's harder. Once the epidemic is sufficiently far along that respiratory cases appear in hospitals, its origins are untraceable. In the case of COVID-19, many people get infected, but only show weak symptoms, or sometimes none at all, ever. Yet they still transmit the disease. The number of people in the population of e.g. Chicago, Cook County, or the state of Illinois is like the rocket's fuel. Each person transmits the disease to many others, and so the liftoff of the epidemic grows far faster than a rocket gathering speed. If this were not hard enough, consider that there was and still is a shortage of testing kits. So we could not even see the disease properly and still can only guess at how many individuals have been infected and remain infectious today. But it's even worse than this. The laws that govern the trajectory of a rocket were discovered by Sir Isaac Newton nearly 400 years ago. But the precise laws that govern the trajectory of an epidemic are still unknown and depend on the behavior of people. By heeding the governor's stay-at-home order, the population of Illinois has dramatically altered the trajectory of the epidemic in ways that we had hoped for but could not precisely predict. The epidemic is like a rocket that you can move by mind control. It's not rocket science. It's harder. The only way to see COVID-19 is through mathematics. For this reason, the governor set up a community forum to coordinate and compare the modeling efforts of three groups within Illinois. In addition to our group from the University of Illinois, there is one from the University of Chicago, headed by Professor Seri Kobe, and another from Northwestern University, he headed by Professor Jeline Gerardin. Professors Kobe and Gerardin are epidemiologists by training. We happen to be theoretical physicists with backgrounds in modeling ecosystems, bacteria, and viruses. Our group is small, but its members, whose expertise ranges from black holes, cosmology, material science, and engineering, are experts in computation and modeling. The modeling challenges posed by COVID-19 are extreme, requiring simulating many thousands of scenarios, calibrating models to data, and many hours of discussion about the results and their possible errors. We are comparing our results in a double-blind way. We can't do peer review because there's not enough time. So what we hope to achieve is consensus on the main trends and take-home messages, not exact agreement about numbers. We are assisted in this community forum by Civis Analytics, who have helped us to get the required data to compare the different team modeling efforts and coordinate the presentation of results to public health officials and the governor's office. The novelty of COVID-19 means that there are many basic things about the virus we do not know. And so we can only make educated guesses as to how to include them in the modeling. The first unknown is so-called seasonal forcing. Everyone knows that influenza tends to be more of a problem in the winter than in the summer. The reasons for this are not agreed upon by epidemiologists, but everyone agrees that this seasonal effect occurs. We do not know if COVID-19 will fade out during the summer. Other coronaviruses do have a seasonal effect, and so we have assumed that COVID-19 will do so also. This means that our models, the Illinois models, University of Illinois models, predict that as we get into the summer months, COVID-19 will tend to be weaker and may even fade away completely. If we are wrong about this, then our predictions will be too optimistic. In models run by us and also by the University of Chicago, we have seen that removing the seasonal forcing effect will indeed make the predictions more pessimistic. And you can see that here on these two graphs. Showing, one showing the University of Illinois calculations with seasonal forcing, one showing the University of Chicago calculations without, more pessimistic as a result of that. However, if we are right about the seasonal forcing, there is still a downside, because it means that after the summer, the virus will start to become more effective and the COVID-19 epidemic will restart. The second unknown is that there can be people who get infected but never show symptoms. 
asymptomatic individuals can potentially cause a problem because it would mean that there are more infectious people in the population than the models predict. This means that our scenarios for the relaxation and mitigation might underestimate the second wave that would be expected to start then. The presence of asymptomatic individuals could also help the scenarios because we could conceivably get more quickly to the point where the epidemic dies out naturally, so-called herd immunity. Some recent studies seem to point to a larger asymptomatic population than is revealed by the number of reported cases. However, don't be fooled. They still, if, even if true, they still lead to a prevalence of individuals who were ever infected of about 3% which is far smaller than what is needed to get to the state of herd immunity. And that is why it is very important that you wear a mask, that we all wear masks, whenever you are not at home. The third unknown is that we do not actually know if one is immune after one has been infected. If this is not the case, then our models will be underestimating the progression of the epidemic. You might wonder why the state of Illinois needs such a vigorous modeling effort. Aren't there huge modeling efforts being undertaken elsewhere by larger groups with more funding and staff? The answer is yes. There are such efforts, but we do not feel that such efforts are as sound scientifically as what we're trying to do here by having a consensus of different models. And we can better focus on the needs of the people of Illinois, for example, by providing predictions and advice for the regions of the state beyond the Chicago metropolitan area and for the hospitals as well.